Good morning, church family. We're so excited to welcome you here today. And if this is your first time with us, we're so glad you're here. We'd love to get to know you, so go ahead and text the word GUEST to 77069. We can't wait to connect with you. Easter Sunday is just one week away, and we're gonna be celebrating all weekend. Starting this Friday, each campus will host a Good Friday service to remember and reflect upon all that Christ has done for us. If you've been considering baptism, this Friday is a great opportunity to do so. Just text BAPTISM to 77069 to get your baptism scheduled on Good Friday. Then, we'll have several Easter services for you to choose from as we celebrate the day that changed everything. It's going to be an unforgettable weekend, and you don't want to miss it. Easter is the perfect opportunity to invite someone new to church. We're saving a seat for you, your neighbor, your family member, your coworker, and your friend. So don't forget to grab some invite cards or door hangers on your way out today so you can be a part of inviting our community to celebrate Easter weekend at Champion Forest. We can't wait to see God move during this special time together. As we head to Easter Sunday, we've developed a Holy Week devotional to prepare your heart for this special time of reflection. Many of us started this morning, but it's not too late to jump in. Join us in this eight-day reading plan as we walk through the last week of Jesus' life on earth. Each day we'll reflect on his nature and how he is who he says he is. If you've signed up before for daily devotionals, you're good to go. For everyone else, just text DEVO to 77069. Once again, welcome to Champion Forest. We are so grateful to be here with you this morning. Good morning, Champion Forest. Let's stand to our feet today. Happy Palm Sunday to each and every one of you. You know, as Jesus was entering into Jerusalem, his triumphal entry, he was welcomed with praise. And he's welcome in this place. Can we welcome him with praise? Not just in this place, but in every situation. I'll praise in the valley and praise on the mountain. Yes, I will. I'll praise when I'm short. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord of my soul. Praise the Lord of my soul. Clap your hands with us. I'll praise when I feel it, and I'll praise when I don't. In every situation, I'll praise you, God. I'll praise because I know. Still in control. Yes, you are God. My praise is a weapon. It's more than a sound. Yes, it is the Lord. My praise is the shout. Hey, that brings Jerry cool down. As long as we're alive, sing this. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to pray.
morning and welcome to worship at Champion Forest. My name is Jarrett Stevens and on behalf of the entire team here, uh, we welcome you to services today. If you're a guest, we certainly want to welcome you. And uh, if you would just text the word guest, G-U-E-S-T to 77069, you'll get a little link there that you can fill out. If you give us your information, we'd love to follow up with you. We're not going to bombard you with calls and emails. We are going to reach out though, just to say thank you for visiting, see if there's any questions that we can answer for you about our church. Just make sure, is there a way that we can minister to you? I'm telling you, sitting around you are some of the nicest people in all of Houston, Texas. And so I want you to turn around, find two or three people you may not know. Welcome them to services today. Tell them you're glad to see them. Glad they're here. We're going to get these services underway. All right, go ahead and be seated. Go ahead and be seated. I want to welcome those that are joining us online, wherever you may be watching from. Thank you for tuning in today. And uh, I was looking online this past week. We had people watching us from Germany. Uh, all the way over there. So if you're watching online, just put in where you're watching from. We want to know. And yeah, we want to welcome those who are watching online and uh, welcome into services today. This is Palm Sunday where we are making our way toward Easter. Uh, and I cannot wait uh, for next weekend. I, I can't wait for today. I've been up since 3.30 ready to preach. And so uh, it's going to be a great day. And it starts uh, with baptism. You know, uh, this is an opportunity for us. Uh, baptism is an opportunity to share with the world and to show the world what we believe. And what we believe is that Jesus, this is what we celebrate on Palm Sunday. He came into Jerusalem announcing his kingship. Now he was a different kind of king uh, in the sense that most kings came in power. Jesus came humbly. And uh, he gave his life, and as we are in the waters of baptism, our bodies represent, it's so picturesque, our bodies are making a cross with that water. Uh, we confess Jesus, and the Bible says that we are buried with him in baptism, so we identify, we die to self, we die to sin, we're identifying with his death, his burial, and his resurrection. That's why the Bible says we are raised to walk in newness of life. And so baptism, it is an outward symbol of what Jesus has done in our hearts. And we've got some people that are testifying to what Jesus has done in their life. So let's turn our attention and celebrate with these who are being baptized today. Good morning, Champion Forest. We have four that are saying Jesus is king today through baptism. This is Celeste Reyes. And this is CJ Amos. CJ and Celeste, are y'all following Jesus in baptism because you've asked him to be the personal Lord and Savior of your life? Yes. It's because of your public declaration of faith that we baptize you as our brother and sister in Christ in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> this is Dan Picone. And this is Joshua Zabo. Dan and Josh, are y'all following Jesus in baptism because you've asked him to be the Lord and Savior of your life? Yes, I am. It's because of your public declaration of faith that we baptize you as our brothers in Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. Ah, so good. Hey. Let's never get over seeing lives changed by the power of the gospel. This is why we do what we do, Champion Force. This is why we give. Uh, this is why we live on mission. This is why we come to worship today, because Jesus, just as you witness, he changes lives. He changes lives. And so we are honored to be in the presence of King Jesus today. I want you to stand across this room as we worship. And as we enter into a time of worship, we have a guest worship leader with us today, Ryan Kennedy. Ryan, thank you for being here. Let's give him a welcome. Ryan is no stranger to Champion Forest. His wife is Charity Gale. I was going to say he's the husband of Charity Gale, but Charity Gale is his wife, all right? And uh, Ryan is a prolific songwriter. He's a worship leader, and uh, we're, we're, we're glad to have you today, Ryan. And so I want us to pray, and uh, we're going to be led in this song, All Hail King Jesus. That's what the people did on that Palm Sunday. They were hailing King Jesus, and we're going to join with that crowd from a long time ago. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your presence. 
Lord, we thank you for changing lives. And Lord, we do today worship you. You are king. And as we, Lord, look to Easter, we recognize that Palm Sunday, you marched into Jerusalem knowing what awaited you. And you willingly laid your life down. And Lord, the scripture says you laid your life down and that you alone had the power to take it up again. And you did that. And so, Lord, in this moment, we just tell you that we love you. We welcome you into this place. We lean in today, God. This is not business as usual. Lord, these songs that we sing, they are prayers to you. Hear our hearts cry today. All hail King Jesus. We lift our hands and our voices and our hearts to you. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. church y'all ready to worship the king in this place today amen amen there was a moment when the lights went out when death had claimed its victory the king of love had given up his life darkest day in history and there on a cross they made for sinners yes for every curse his blood atoned one final breath and it was finished yeah. but not the end we could have known that's right for in a dark to shake and the veil and the veil was torn. Yeah. Oh, what sacrifice was made as the heavens roared. Oh, hail King
church and all hail the Lord of heaven and earth. Oh, hail King Jesus. Yes. Oh, Jesus, that you've raised us, that you've seated us with you in heavenly places. You invite us in, God. You invite us to come and sit at your table, the table of the King as sons and daughters. We, we thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Let our song be a song of praise. Let our song be a song of adoration to the King of Kings this morning. Welcome me, 
Let's just keep this posture of prayer going. And if you want, I'm just gonna ask you if you feel so led, I know it'll be a little bit harder in the balcony, but if there's anybody here that just wants to come bow before the king and lay a request at the throne room of the Lord, you can just come right here to this altar. We're just gonna have a time of prayer. If you wanna come, if you wanna come with your spouse and just grab their, them by the hand and just come and kneel with me right here at the altar, you just have a special prayer request or a special need, or you just want to humble yourself right here and front of God and our church and just get before the Lord. Let's just right now, what a, what a beautiful, what a beautiful song. I love you, Lord. When's the last time you told the Lord, I, Lord, I love you. For what you did in my life, for who you are, just take a posture of prayer and Ryan, why don't you just lead us in that song, I love you, Lord, just that chorus as people are coming and Right after this course, you just get here, we'll have a time of prayer. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you. I want to sing a sweet, sweet melody to tell you that I love you. Oh, pray right now if you don't know what to pray just that that sentence would do I love you Lord the Bible says that the prayers of his people are like incense that comes to the throne of the Lord he receives it he accepts it he loves it he doesn't need us but the mercy and grace of God to allow us and to offer us an invitation to come into his throne with boldness that's what we do in this moment so just pray share with the Lord what's on your heart there's not an immediate need would you just ask the Lord to speak to you today His presence is here. This is a holy moment. There's an addiction. God, by the power of the Spirit, can break it. There's a physical sickness. The Lord can heal it. And if He chooses to let it remain, He will give you the strength to endure. And He will purify your faith. We just trust Him and we look to Him and we hold on to Him. there's a son or daughter or grandson or granddaughter that's away from the Lord, God by His grace can pursue that loved one and bring them back in a moment. Let's just ask. We all know one or two people that need the Lord. 
that don't have what we have, forgiveness of sin, a right relationship with God, peace and purpose in our life. Why don't you just lift their name up to the Lord right now and ask God to do something special this week as people are in tune to spiritual things as we approach Resurrection Sunday. Father, in Jesus' name, there is nothing more important than what we're doing in this moment. Crying out to you. It was on the Monday of Holy Week where you went into the temple and you said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Lord, hear the prayers of your people in this moment. Thank you for your presence here that changes our lives. Lord, we pronounce to you in this moment that you are our king and we're bowed before you. If not in physical stature, with a a posture of bowing before you. We just confess our need for you today, Lord, for any anxieties and needs and burdens that people are carrying today. Many are here, bowed before you, Lord, just as a symbol of saying, I can't do this on my own. Lord, I pray that you would grant them your very presence to walk alongside them in this time. That, Father, they would sense your nearness and your closeness. God, we love you. We ask you to work in our hearts and in our lives and through our church today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, amen. 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 Thank you. As they're making their way back uh, to their seat, uh, that song that we just lifted up, was written by Ryan Kennedy and Darrell Comedy. And these are songs out of the heart of this church, and we wanna do more and more of that in the future. Go ahead and be seated as you're making your way back. I wanna ask, as you're getting seated, for our ushers to come forward to receive the morning offering. And before the offering buckets are passed, Uh, You know, uh, churches all over the world today are doing exactly what we're doing. I I think it's always important to remember, you know, sometimes we get so focused in on what we're doing that we forget God's a really big God. He's working all over Northwest Houston, Metro Houston. He's working all over the state of Texas. He's working all over the United States, all over the world. And we always like to tell you that you're giving is going and what it's accomplishing and we have a ministry here at our church called the cf connect it is our church planting and pastor blessing resource arm of the church when you give a portion of your proceeds goes to our mission uh missions offering that supports churches in the last three years you're going to see on a map right here uh, behind me over the last three years we have helped uh, nearly 60 churches get up and going as they are planting literally all over the united states now this is just what we've done Jamie Forrest, this is just what this is just what you have done in the last three years in North America. Okay, we're concentrating on North America right here uh, today. And the purple represent English churches. As you can see, it's literally all over. The blue represents Spanish congregations that we have planted. The numbers on this, just so you have them, 38 English congregations we've helped plant or support over the last three years. 19 Spanish congregations. And these are all over. Uh, we have currently... Right now, uh, 14 Spanish pastors in training that we're going to send out over the course of the next year. So we'll be adding to this number. And I just want you to know, when you give uh, of your uh, tithes and offerings, it's not just staying here. One of our focus priorities as a church is to strengthen the church. That's the church at large. We want to reach as many people as possible in our own area. We want to be a church where if you're in Northwest Houston, uh, we, we want you to be a part of what God's doing here because we believe in the ministry of Champion Forest. But we also know 
that it is not about building our kingdom. It is about building the kingdom. And so thank you for your generosity in giving. There are a number of different ways you can give. You can put it in the offering plate when it's passed. You can put it in our giving baskets when you leave. You can sign up for recurring giving online. And what I encourage you to do with Champion Force Connect, if you ever give to CF Connect, give over and above your regular tithes and offerings. You can designate your giving to CF Connect, but give over and above your regular tithes and offerings. And just know when you do give your tithes and offerings, a percentage of that is going to support churches just like this. And I say that to say, you saw that map, all these churches. Whenever you're traveling in the summer or you're on vacation or maybe you're traveling with work, if you're in a major city or if you're not in a major city, we just planted a church in College Station last week. Okay, the Aggies need Jesus. And so we planted a church right there in College Station. And so wherever you're traveling, uh, and these, these churches are, you can see them all uh, online, championforce.org, you can see it. But uh, whenever you're traveling, uh, and you're there over a weekend, go to one of these Champion uh, CF Connect churches and tell them who you are and participate in the worship. It'll bless uh, these pastors in these cities. Also, uh, we have uh, a few years, uh, a couple years ago, we had our forward program where we were updating uh, the church and just upgrading some of our facilities. And, and that started with seeing our prayer room. Uh, and we've always had a vibrant prayer ministry, but we just wanted to say, you know what? Let's turn the dial up a little bit because we're never going to go. Uh, it's all about it's all about prayer. God's going to going to move according to the prayers of his people. And so if you go into our prayer room, it's open 24 hours a day. Uh, we now have in there all of these different cards. I mean, there's, again, nearly 60 of them of the churches that we've helped plant. And you can look at these cards there. It's got the name of the pastor. It's got the name of the church, where they're planting a little bio on the back. And we have note cards right there by these where you can take them. You can pray for them. Write them a note and just leave that note there. We'll be coming through the prayer room. And uh, we'll send that to these pastors and planners, the note that you wrote, and it'll encourage them and bless them. And uh, again, I just think it's important to note and remember that uh, we're not in this alone. We got brothers and sisters and churches all across uh, North America doing a great work. And again, for us, to whom much is given, much is required. We want to bless, resource, and encourage, and just work together to saturate uh, North America with churches. So thank you for giving. Uh, go ahead and pass the baskets that the baskets are being passed. Uh, we're going to sing a, a great song here. I speak Jesus. It's a favorite of champion for us. So let's give, let's engage, and then on to the teaching and preaching of God's word.
shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets, yes. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Come on. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. seated go do it and uh, as you're taking a seat let's say thank you to this choir and praise team Ryan Kennedy thank you for being here and uh, you know uh, listen uh, worship uh, our philosophy around here worship is is it's it's warfare you know you're, you're you're we meet here every Sunday and then you're in the week and the enemy likes to beat you up 
And uh, we go through ups and downs. And the reason that there's a Sabbath, the reason there's a weekly worship service is so that the body of Christ can come together like this. And we see our brothers and sisters from all walks of life, different backgrounds, different experiences, different cultures, different ethnicities, different age groups. And yet we're all in the same place together lifting up the name of Jesus. And I don't know about you, there's just, worship is a perspective changer. And whenever you're in that, that, that uh, uh, place of just being pulled in every direction and sensing the enemy breathing down your neck, and this is, why we, this is why we get together and we sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs and we get after it because it's warfare and it's just an opportunity for us to link arms and say we're in this together and Jesus, our eyes are on you and we're not going to quit, we're not going to back down. This is about you, Jesus, and we are here together as a faith family. And aren't you glad you came to church this morning to experience this? Uh, there's something about it. That's why I encourage you, don't miss out. Uh, we, we have our online experience, and online is good, but it ain't the same as being in the room, I'm just telling you. So get here if you can, and uh, participate and engage and lean in, and uh, we are on our way to Easter. I'm calling the sermon uh, today a Palm Sunday Reflection. This is what the message is all about, the power of reflecting. If there is ever a week to slow down, to contemplate, to attempt to the best of our ability, wrap our mind around that last week of Jesus' life, the Passion Week of Christ. This is the week. Uh, our team has actually written some Easter devotionals for you to help us engage in slowing down and contemplating and reflecting. And if you did not get an email today at about five o'clock, that means you're not in the link and you need to text the word DEVO. Uh, to 77069. If you'll text that, there'll be a link there where you can register. And for the next eight days, uh, you'll get a devotional from us about five o'clock uh, in the morning. And it goes over the name of Jesus. Today was King of Zion, the passage that we're looking at today. We put a music video in there just so you can worship after you read and think. And uh, there's message comments there. You can interact with your church members. But if you want to be a part of our daily devotions and are not getting them, just text Devo uh, there to 77069 and we can all get on the same page together. I believe that right reflection leads to right worship. And what I mean when I say right reflection is this, uninterrupted time. This is the equation I'll put on the screen for you. Uninterrupted time. I mean, you go into that time alone with the Lord and you mean business with the Lord. The computer's not open, the cell phone's not there buzzing, the radio's not on, it's you and God. Uninterrupted time plus unhurried devotion. Uh, it's, it's Houston pollen season around here. Anybody congested? You know what I'm talking about? Well, our souls in the busyness of life get congested. And the only way we can get cleaned out is to sit still before the Lord and to not be rushed. God speaks to the unhurried soul. And so uninterrupted time plus unhurried devotion equals uninhibited worship. When you spent time with the Lord and it hadn't been rushed and he's downloading truth to you by the power of his word, I'm telling you, you're ready to live a life wholly committed to him. I wanna help us begin our journey toward Easter and I wanna help encourage and motivate you to reflect by looking at that Palm Sunday that Jesus, the first day of the last week of his life, marched into Jerusalem. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 21, starting in verse one, when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, when Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village in front of you and immediately you'll find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say the Lord needs them and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet saying, say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey on a colt, the foal of a beast of a burden. And the disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. And they brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks and sat, he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him 
that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up saying, who is this? And the crowd said, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. This picture of Jesus marching into Jerusalem on the final week of his life has always captured me. It's rich in symbolism and imagery. Uh, It's a beautiful picture of what's taking place. Jesus, we know this is the start of Passover week. Of all of the holy convocations and festivals that were instituted in the nation of Israel where pilgrims would come a few times a year to Jerusalem to make sacrifices and to celebrate and to worship, of all of their holy convocations, of all of their meetings, Passover was the most sacred one. It was the most holy one. It was rooted in the historical event of Moses where he led the Israelites out of the bondage and slavery of Egypt and it signified God's divine deliverance of God's people via the blood of a sacrificial lamb. You can read all about this in Exodus. Pharaoh, of course, would not let the people of Israel go. God has raised Moses up, his servant, to speak to Pharaoh. He performed mighty miracles to show Pharaoh that God meant business. But the Bible says Pharaoh continued to harden his heart. And he wouldn't let the people of Israel go. And so God comes to Moses and he says, you go to Pharaoh and you tell him I'm going to do one more miracle work. And you go to the people of Israel and you tell them to bring a lamb into their home, a little lamb. It's to be spotless, it's to be without blemish, innocent, if you will. And after keeping that lamb for a number of days, you are to slaughter that lamb and you're to put the blood of that lamb over the doorpost of your home. If if you do not put the blood of the lamb over the doorpost of your home, I'm going to pass through And the firstborn of every family will be put to death. But if I see the blood of the spotless lamb, I will pass over, i.e. pass over. I will pass over. I will rescue you. I will deliver you. And of course, that event ensues. And God instructs Moses, Exodus chapter 12, verse 14. It'll be on the screen for you. This day shall be a memorial for you. And you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations as a statute forever. You shall keep it as a feast. And so this is what is being celebrated in Jerusalem. When Jesus goes into Jerusalem on that Palm Sunday, thousands and thousands of pilgrims are there. And don't miss this picture. That the one true Passover lamb is coming into Jerusalem on Passover. He's going to willingly give his life, shed his blood, and he is going to save and deliver his people. See, this is the reason when John the Baptist saw Jesus for the very first time on the banks of the Jordan River, he looked at it and divinely inspired. He said, that is the Lamb of God who takes away, John 1, 29, that is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And so Jesus, the Passover Lamb, on Passover, going into Jerusalem. It's prophetic, it's beautiful, it's powerful to think about, incredibly symbolic, and as God could only do, he has arranged this, he has divinely purposed this. And so as we begin our Palm Sunday reflection, I want us to begin by first, I want us to reflect on the sovereignty of Jesus. I want you to think about this. Jesus knew exactly what was going to take place when he went to Jerusalem. Matter of fact, four different occasions. We won't look at them all just because of time, but let me give them to you. Matthew chapter 16 at Caesarea Philippi, Jesus warned his disciples, I'm going to Jerusalem and I'm gonna be handed over and put to death. Again, in Matthew chapter 17, Mark also shares this uh, episode in Mark chapter nine, it's of the transfiguration where who Jesus is on the inside is manifested on the outside for the very first time. They see Jesus in his glory and they want to worship him, his disciples, his inner circle. And yet Jesus, right after that happens, tells them, I'm going to Jerusalem. I'm going to be handed over. 
I'm going to be flogged. I'm going to be beaten. I'm going to be crucified, but I will be raised on the third day. The disciples don't understand this. They're distressed about it. What do you mean this is going to happen? But they can't really wrap their mind around it. The scripture would tell us that it was actually concealed from them from understanding. A third time, Matthew chapter 20, sometime between leaving Jericho and getting to Jerusalem. Last week, we talked about Zacchaeus. That was the episode in Jerusalem. He's on his way up to Jerusalem. Sometime between Jericho and Jerusalem, Jesus pulls his disciples aside and says, this is what's going to happen. We're going to Jerusalem and I'm going to be handed over. I'm going to be put to death. On Tuesday of Holy Week, right after the Olivet Discourse, Matthew 24 and 25, we see in the first part of Matthew 26, Jesus said, the time is here. I'm about to be handed over. I'm about to be put to death. I'm going to be crucified, but I will be raised on the third day. What's the point of all of this? The point is nothing that is taking place or that will take place in the life of Jesus is taking him by surprise. When he went into Jerusalem on that Palm Sunday, no one saw him as the one true Passover lamb. But let me tell you who that wasn't lost on. Jesus. He knew exactly what he was doing. He told his followers repeatedly, this is going to happen. And I want you to think about it in the context of the disciples. Their whole world is about to seem like it is out of their control. In a matter of a week, They go from being celebrated on Palm Sunday, Hosanna, son of David, this is the Messiah, we worship you. In a matter of just a few days, their master is put to death, they are in hiding, and they're fearful for their lives. Their plans to be large and in charge with Jesus. Their plans to rule with him as Jesus restores Israel to a national power is shot. And to them, their whole world is about to feel like they are totally out of control. But Jesus, totally in control. He's in control of the big picture He's in control of the large aspects of life. He knew he was going to willingly lay down his life and he knew he was going to willingly take it up again. But Jesus wasn't just involved in the big picture. He was involved in the most minute of details. Did you catch that in Matthew 21, that second part of verse one, he sends two of his disciples and says, go into the village in front of you and immediately you'll find a donkey tied and a colt with her, untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say the Lord needs them and he'll send them at once. And and Matthew says, this took place to fulfill what was spoken to the prophet, saying, say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the full of a beast of burden. And the disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. Luke records this event in his gospel. Luke chapter 19, verse 32 says, so those that were sent away found it just as he had told them. And so we don't know if Jesus prearranged this donkey and colt to be there and worked with the owners to say, I'm going to send my disciples after it. I don't think he did. I think this is just, again, it's a nod to his sovereignty. They're going to be there. It's going to go down just like this, disciples. You go, you're going to get asked about it. This is what you tell them to say. He's into the smallest of details. Jesus is well aware of the prophecy of Zechariah. Matthew mentions here, It was made 500 years previous to this. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation. Is he humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey? We'll unpack this here in just a minute a little bit more, but just notice what's taking place here. Jesus, again, he's sovereign. He's in control even of the small things, even of the fact that he comes marching to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives. If you were to continue reading Zechariah's prophecy, you would see that when the day of the Lord comes, which Zechariah prophesied, he would come and he would set his feet, this is Zechariah 14, 4, on the Mount of Olives. Now we know that this is an allusion to the return of Jesus. Which, by the way, the first time he comes humble on a donkey, the next time he's coming on a battle horse, okay, in victory, in power. 
And when he comes, where is he going to return to? The Bible tells us he's going to return to the Mount of Olives. But don't miss this. Jesus knew. He, he was aware of the symbolism and what it meant, the prophecy for him to come to Jerusalem via the Mount of Olives. This was the coming day of the Lord. Everything Jesus was doing in this moment was purposeful. And so I want to call, I want to call you today to reflect on his sovereignty. And if you will rightly reflect on this doctrine that God is over and in control of the big things in life and he is involved intricately in the little details, if you will rightly reflect unhurried, uninterrupted time, unhurried devotion, I promise you it will result in uninhibited worship. Test it. Just reflect on it this week. Nothing's outside of the control of God. Nothing surprises God. No sickness. No cancer. No broken relationship. No miscarriage. No loss of a job. No matter how tough your trial may be, there is nothing taking place in your life that God is surprised by or is outside of his control. This is his sovereignty. Nothing can touch the child of God without first filtering through his holy hands. You think on that, and I promise you, it'll be a warm blanket for your soul. It'll lead you to worship. It will. Now, his sovereignty doesn't mean that we don't have the freedom to make choices. It doesn't mean that our choices don't matter. What it means is that God is bigger than the choices that we make, and he's not limited by our choices. See, we play checkers, God plays chess. He's sovereign. And just in reflecting on it, it ought to bring a, a great amount of peace to our hearts. I was reading an article this week just studying the sovereignty of God written by a pastor here in Texas. He said this, the sovereignty of God isn't some abstract theological idea that has little meaning in our lives. Rather, it's endless fuel for the worship of God, even in the midst of uncertainty and despair. It doesn't make life easy, but it does give hope. Realizing my lack of control doesn't have to paralyze me with fear. Instead, it fixes my eyes on the almighty creator. Knowing that a wise and loving God is orchestrating the events in my life brings comfort to my weary soul. When fear of the unknown begins to grip your heart, dwell on the comforting truth of God's sovereignty. Palm Sunday reminds us to reflect on the sovereignty of God. It also reminds us to reflect on the royalty of Jesus. This entire passage screams of royalty. Jesus going into the city, palm branches being waved, cloaks being put down on the ground, essentially the laying out of the red carpet. They are worshiping Jesus. This is a royal procession. He's a king, the scripture says. Verse 5. Your king is coming to you. He's a king. He's royalty. They're shouting out, son of David. That's a messianic term. They're shouting out, Hosanna, which is a combination of two words, which means to save us, please, or save us, we pray. It's a direct quote from Psalm chapter 118, verse 25 and 26. The psalmist writes, save us, we pray, O Lord. That Hebrew word right there translated into the Greek is the word Hosanna. Save us, O Lord. We pray, give us success. And then it says this, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The crowds welcoming Jesus that day, they knew this was a special occasion. Now they didn't know the fullness of what they were doing, but they knew something different was going on. And in no way could they ever perceive how God was going to answer this prayer to save us now. But they are for sure worshiping. That's why John says they took palm branches and they waved them and they took their cloaks and they put them on the ground. This is worship. Psalm 18 which is quoted here, they're quoting to Jesus. They would have been very familiar with Psalm 18. It is a psalm of worship and joy. Just read it. It outlines God's steadfast love and it revels in how God delivers and how God rescues. 
There's relief from the people of God because they can go into the temple from the house of the Lord and give praise to God for who he is and what he's done. Now, with that in mind, let me take you somewhere for a moment. This week, Robert Morgan was in town. Robert's a great friend of ours, went with us on our Israel trips. He's the author of Red Sea Rules, numerous books. He was in town studying over at the Lanier Library, working on another book, and got to get with him for a few uh, moments, shared a meal together, and He was telling me, I'm having him come preach at our CF Connect Let's Talk Preaching Conference in October. We invite pastors from all over the country in. And I've asked Robert to teach one of the sessions there, a couple of the sessions there. And he was telling me what he's working on with preachers right now is he's encouraging them if they will go 20% deeper in their teaching, he believes that the churches will grow 50% stronger. Now, I have no idea if that's true or not, but it sounded really good. And so here's my attempt at going 20% deeper. With that Psalm 118 in mind, a psalm of celebration, God's love, reveling in God's deliverance. You combine that with the fact that Jesus quotes the prophet Zechariah. Now the setting of Zechariah's prophecy, Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9, which Jesus quotes here, is Israel's been in 100 years of apostasy. They've come out of 70 years of Babylonian exile. They're they're trying to rebuild their city. They're trying to rebuild the temple, which has been destroyed, which means the presence of God is not there. This is a dark day. This is a discouraging day when Zechariah is making this prophecy. It's not going well at all. And if you read the fullness of the prophecy, Matthew leaves the first part out. Look at it again. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly. Matthew leaves that out. Why would you, why is Zechariah telling the people of Israel to rejoice? Their city's in ruins, the temple's destroyed, it ain't going well. What do I have to rejoice about? Then he says this, shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem, that daughter of Zion, that daughter of Jerusalem, that's just talking to the inhabitants, those who live in Jerusalem, those who love the city of God. Why should they rejoice? Why should they shout? Because, look at it, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation as he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. If you were to continue reading that Zechariah prophecy, you go into verses 14 through 17, you see that when Jesus comes or the king of Israel comes, he's going to bring peace and prosperity. The people will experience his goodness and beauty. And so think with me what's going on in this moment. Zechariah's prophecy is coming to fruition. The people see this figure that they've heard about riding on a donkey, just as Zechariah promised. Their mind goes to Psalm chapter 118. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, save us, we pray right now. Save us. It's a, it's a, it's a cry to be rescued and to be delivered. And you know what's more? You know what's more incredible than the fact that they worship. Now, again, they didn't know the fullness of what they were doing because just in a few days, they're going to be shouting crucify. But you know what's incredible about their worship? It's not, I mean, what they said is amazing because again, it's just fulfillment of scripture. But what's more important than that is that Jesus receives their worship. Think about this. Jesus in his earthly ministry, whenever he performed a miracle, he, if you recall the scriptures, he would say, hey, don't tell anybody about that. Okay. Just go home, show yourself to your family, go to, the, go to the temple, make a sacrifice. He was like, because he, he didn't want his time to be rushed. He knew his miracle working ministry, people would say, they, they would rush him. And so he'd say, don't do that, don't do that. But in this moment, he readily receives their worship. He accepts their worship. Why? Because he's a king and he's worthy of it. The Pharisees around there, Luke's gospel tells us in Luke chapter 19, verse 39, some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, teacher, rebuke your disciples. Don't let them shout these hosannas. Don't let them call you son of David. They knew full well what they were saying when they said this. And look at what Jesus said. He said, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. He's worthy of worship. That's why when we come in, man, we're not just going through motions. King Jesus is worthy of our worship. And if we don't shout, the very stones will. We're not going to let stones out worship us. No. Man, he's worthy. He's royal. We just came out of this kingdom project series. He is our king. And as his, as king, we are his subjects. We live under his rule and reign. And so the question is, are you? Are your relationships under the rule and reign of Christ? 
Is your marriage, your dating life, is it under the rule and reign of Christ? How do you spend your time? How do you interact with others? Does it represent that you are a kingdom citizen? What about your worship? When you come into the room, are you ready to worship the king? Eager to give your offering honor to be in his presence? Reflect on his royalty this week. And I'm telling you, uninterrupted time, plus unhurried devotion, you'll be ready for uninhibited worship. Reflect on his sovereignty. Reflect on his royalty. And then thirdly, let's reflect on the humility of Jesus. Notice he's different. Again, he came on a donkey, not like Caesar would have on this battle horse. Jesus came humbly, not beating his chest in power. He came to assume a crown, but it wouldn't be filled with jewels. Instead, it would consist of thorns. As Zechariah predicted, he is a, a humble king. From the very beginning of his life, Jesus exhibited humility. Born in an obscure area to a peasant family. 80% of his ministry was in the backwoods of Galilee. No, nothing big about the Galilee region. Very unassuming. His whole life was one of humility. And you know how Jesus' humility was often exemplified? You know how we know he was humble? It's not because he told us he was. It's because he showed us. And it was exemplified in his service to others. You know, we're looking at Palm Sunday here, and we're going to look forward to Good Friday on Friday, and then we're at Resurrection Sunday. But don't forget, there's Thursday there where Jesus took his disciples in an upper room and he washes their feet before he institutes the Lord's Supper. And what does he say? I'm leaving you an example that you should go and do for others what I have done for you. And what's the example? It's to serve. It's to serve. Jesus is the greatest servant leader to ever live because he was the most humble man to ever live. How can I say that? Same reason Paul could say in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11, let this mindset be in you, the same as that of Christ Jesus, though he was in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he made himself nothing. He emptied himself, taking on the form of a what? Servant. And how did that, how did that, how did that work? He, he took the form of a servant, by humbling himself even to become obedient to death on a cross. Man, if I reflect on the humility of Jesus, and I have this week, I just want to remind you, whenever I preach a message, I tell you this all the time, but I promise you before I ever get up here and preach this message to you, God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, has preached it to me, okay? And as I've reflected on the humility of Jesus just in studying this passage this week, you know what I've been convicted of? How, how prideful I am. Walking around, people should serve me, especially in the home. Girls. <laughs> it's embarrassing. The humi- I'm, gonna, I, I'm, I'm resolved this week that I'm going to put this to the test, that I'm going to work like crazy to reflect on Jesus' humility, because here's my hypothesis, that if I will reflect, truly reflect on the humility of Jesus, right? This whole thing that we're talking about here, uninterrupted time, unhurried devotion. I'm convinced that if I will rightly reflect on the humility of Jesus, I don't think I can fixate on myself at the same time. I'm gonna test it out. I want you to test it out with me. Man, this is Holy Week. We're going toward Easter. And you know, there's a, this passage ends, I was just thinking about this, this passage ends and verse 10 and 11, when he entered Jerusalem, I love this, the whole city was stirred up saying, who is this? This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. So here, here's, here's, here's what I'm challenging you to do. Palm Sunday Reflection. This week, I'm landing the plane, by the way, all right? I'm not going to circle the runway. I'm landing it, okay? Uninterrupted time. 
unhurried devotion, that's right reflection, it will lead to uninhibited worship. And here's what I'm asking you to do, Champion Force. Let's, this week, let's focus. Let's do this. And let's reflect on what we've talked about today. Deeply this week, the sovereignty of Jesus, the royal, he's king, his humility. And I bet if we'll do that, I bet we'll come back to Easter services next week ready to worship. And I bet there'll be such a stir that people will say, what is going on? And we say, it's the prophet Jesus of Nazareth. He changed his lives. He can change yours today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. It's the invitation. You're here today and you don't know King Jesus. You've never submitted to his royalty, to his kingship in this moment. I'm telling you, God's calling you to himself. He brought you here for a divine purpose. He is sovereign. You are not here just because you're invited by someone. You are not here just because you saw a sign in someone's yard pointing you to Champion Force. You are not here just because you moved to this area and you're looking for a new church home. No, 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 no. God is working behind the scenes. He brought you here. You're here because God wanted you here to hear this message. And he wants you to receive him today if you don't know him. He wants your sins. He wants to forgive you of your sin. He wants to restore you to a right relationship with the Lord. All you gotta do is call on the name of the Lord just like they did then, save us, we pray. That's all you gotta say, Hosanna, save us, we pray. And God sees the posture of your heart, he sees your faith and he'll change you from the inside out. And if you're praying that prayer, save me, Jesus. Save me, I believe your death, your burial, your resurrection. I'm trusting in you, I'm submitting to you. We're gonna stand and sing here in just a moment. As soon as we begin singing, you come forward and you just tell the pastor that's standing at the head of this aisle, I'm giving my life to Jesus and we'll take it from there. We're gonna put resources in your hand, help you grow. We're gonna answer any questions. We're gonna pray for you. Most of all, we're gonna celebrate with you. Others of you, you may be visiting and you're thinking, man, I wanna be a part of a church like this. You kidding me? A church that gets after it in worship, a church that prays, a church that ain't going through the motions, a church that's on mission, a church that's lifting up Jesus. Now hear me, we are not a perfect church and if you join, you will mess us up if you're perfect, okay? So if you're perfect, don't join our church. But if you wanna be a part of a church on mission that loves Jesus and does the best of our ability, live in community and serve one another, you come forward, tell the pastor, I wanna join the church. We'll tell you about our membership class. We got baptism this Friday. You wanna be like those four that got in the water today and said, Jesus, you're my Lord, I'm following you. We can do it Friday at our Good Friday service. Why don't you come forward? We'll get it scheduled. I've never met anybody that regretted getting in the waters of baptism and showing the world that they're following Jesus. I don't know what decision you need to make. It may be your response in this invitation to say, God, you know what? I haven't been reflecting like I need to be. My devotional life has been hurried. It ha it's been interrupting. I, I mean, I just, I start checking my social media or just, you know, my mind, want, God, I, I I haven't been waking up earlier. It may be a time of repentance for you. The invitation is just, you know what, God, that's my heart. I, I, I need to repent right now. Help me this holy week to reflect. So Father, I, I have no idea what you're doing in the hearts of your people, but I know you're moving. I know you're speaking and we just wanna be obedient. And so Lord, in this time of invitation, my only request of you, God, is that if you've spoken to hearts, we will respond in a way that honors you however you see fit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen and amen. As you look up, I'm gonna ask you to stand up. The ministers of our church here and here and here and here in the balcony, they're on the landing area. If you need to make a decision, you just come right now, come on. Christians, you're praying for that person on your right, on your left, in front of you, behind you. God's spoken to your heart, you just come right now. bless you. Anybody else? Come on. All right, let's sing it.
know you want to rejoice with all of these that came forward and say congratulations to them on whatever decision they're making. Never want you to leave without your questions answered, okay? So we have a connection room in the back, my right, your left back there. We have pastors back there, volunteers from our church that would love to answer any questions that you may have, help you make pray through any decisions that you're making. And uh, so any questions about the church, go to our connection room right back there. Always glad for you to come forward and celebrate with you. But if you just said, oh, I didn't get down there today, just go to that connection room. We'd love uh, to, to walk with you in that. A couple things before you leave. Number one, Easter services next week, different times, okay? You need to know this. Uh, if you come at 1045, come at 1045, because you'll actually be on time for the 11 o'clock service, okay? <laughs> so we have uh, two identical services, nine o'clock and 11 o'clock, identical services, okay? Right here in this room, nine o'clock and 11 o'clock, uh, that's Easter. We have a Good Friday service at 6.30. And I wanna remind you, those are two different services. Our Good Friday services is more reflective. We have the Lord's Supper that we'll take together. I'll do a short devotional. Uh, we will baptize, it's a great service. We keep it to a, right at an hour. And uh, we honor that time, but it's a really good service to get you looking forward uh, for Resurrection Sunday, okay? I hope you'll take some cards, pass those out, help us get the word out. And I hope you'll invite somebody. If you say, what would I even say? Well, we put the message up on the screen for you. Just take a shot of this and we, you just put the name in there and say, I'm sitting in church right now. I thought about you. We'd love for you to join. You can just text them this, okay? Well, we're spoon feeding you here, all right? And so just text somebody. All of us know somebody needs to make Easter services. It's going to be a great, great week. God bless you, Champion Forest. I love you. Have a great Easter week. We'll see you next Sunday.